Hello internet, it is Skepsis coming at you with part 2 of my mixing tutorial series in partnership with Splice. What does that mean, you might ask? Well, you'll be able to download the project file from this video through the Splice website and software to follow along with the series. Splice is a cloud networking system that allows you to store, backup, and share the, your production sessions publicly or privately online. In the last episode we went over subtractive EQing to fit sounds tightly together within your mix. And in this episode, we're going to be focusing on making use of stereo space and track-specific compression to avoid huge peaks going through your final master. First things first, let me explain why we want to use our left-to-right space. It's because first of all, it sounds awesome, and second of all, it just creates more room for our sounds so that they're less piled up and clashing and they don't fight each other as much in the mix. To widen up your song, you have to look at it as individual elements. A hi-hat, for instance, should be sounding very wide because hi-hats are at the far edges of a drum kit. It just makes sense. But for something like a lead, you have to decide in your own mind, for your own self, if it should be wide or narrow. You kind of have to just figure out how it's going to sound in your song. First things first, we have this lead. Now, I'm not sure how much you remember about the last episode, whether you watched it just a minute ago or several weeks ago. But I know that there are chords behind this melody supporting the lead. They sound like this. So my thoughts are when listening to that is that the lead should be kind of like in the center because it's the centerpiece and the chord should be spread widely around it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that these two sounds here, let's solo that for a second. As you can see here I have one sound for the chord, it is a lower sound and then for this one I have the same sound. One thing you can do is take these two sounds, move one up an octave like that, and then separate them left to right. As you can see, this first track here is sent about one quarter to the left, and the second track is sent about a quarter to the right. When you play them together, they sound nice and wide. This layer here, the brightest fuzz layer, is just a bass note to give the chord some strength. That one can stay right in the middle, because that supports the lead melody really, really well. So what do we have next? Now that uh, we've wind up those synths, we have this collective here. Which is really just there to be atmospheric, so we don't need to do any work there. And we have this pad, which already sounds quite wide, but a pad isn't an instrument. We can't boost it an octave, make a second track, and spread it apart, so what do you do to make it sound wider? Well, there's a couple different things you could do. Logic has some plugins. For instance, if we go down here to imaging, we have the directional mixer and the stereo spread. Stereo spread is the better of the two. It allows you to control the width of the sound based on the frequencies. So generally, you don't want anything under 100 hertz to be stereo spread. So you just move this up. And you can even make it so that it gets wider as the frequencies go up like this. and that'll do the trick, that'll widen it right out. But if you don't want to use that, you can also duplicate the pad. Alt, click, and drag to duplicate it. Zoom in a little bit. Hold down Control to move it just a tiny, tiny bit so the sounds are playing out of sync a little bit. And then you could just pan one to the left and one to the right, and that'll make them sound nice and wide as well. They're almost exactly the same thing. The only difference is Doing it with the plugin preserves your low end stereo spacing. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the stereo spreader plugin. Remember what I said about hi hats? Let's push one almost all the way to the right and the other one almost all the way to the left. Just like that. It'll sound nice and wide and kind of encapsulate the entire mix. Aside from that, we have this riser, which I've already spread to the sides, just like this. This one's left, this one's right this one's center. Any sound that's in the center, we can grab an EQ and cut away some low frequencies like that. Here we have two offbeat hats. Again, I've put one very, very far to the left and the other very, very far to the right. One thing you can do if the sounds aren't standing apart enough just from being offset a little bit is you can actually go into the EQ and make it so that the, the samples are focusing on different parts of the sound. So for this one, I'll do an extreme high pass and on this hat, I'm going to go in and I'm going to take away some of the highs and then together they'll sound a little bit more fulfilled. As of right now, our mix is going to sound really wide and really full.
hear that it sounds quite a lot more powerful. Now what we need to do in the next video, the next part of the series, is fill in the frequency gaps, fill in the spaces, and really make this sound huge. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.